Hi, I'm Toby. I'm an ink and watercolour artist. And Hi, I'm Toby. I'm an ink and watercolour artist. And today I'm going to show you how to sketch and paint a fun little suburban scene. The reference image is in the description. Um, you can find a link to it on my Instagram account. All I'm going to be using today is a mechanical pencil a fountain pen with some waterfast ink. I have a size 8 round brush and I've got a few watercolours and I'll talk you through them as I use them. There's just three simple stages to this. A really quick, number one, a really quick pencil drawing, just marking out the big shapes. Then number two, we'll go in with the pen, we'll mark out those big shapes again and add some details. Then number three, we do the watercolours and we'll do that in probably two or three different washes. Sort of faint wash all over and then a couple more to get the shadows and details. So let's start. I've got my pencil here and here we're just going to be really rough. It doesn't really matter if we make mistakes, we can rub it out. So we've got this main house here which I want to put just off centre as our focal point. There we go, just plot it out as a square, and on top of the square is a triangle for the roof. So the triangle isn't quite an equilateral triangle. And then we've got the roof, and this nice line. And then the next roof line comes in here, and of course at the top here. Then we've got another house coming in, probably starts about there, to there, and that's the roof of that house, and then the wall. My palette there, just getting in the way, I'm just going to move my palette for the rest of the sketching. We'll bring it back when we need it. Alright, so we've got a nice quite interesting chimney to pop in there. I'm just trying to add a little bit of shape with the lines we're drawing. And then right in the foreground we've got this very interesting street lamp. I just want to place exactly where that will be. So be about there. Then we want to refine a few things. So I think I made the house too tall, that's fine. This house is closer to us in the image, so in the bottom of it will be closer to us. A couple of lines there. All right. And then the next thing to add in are these houses in the distance. So try and get the perspective approximately right. There we go. And just add that shape so we know which bit's the roof. And then we also know that we've got a few houses coming towards us. So we'll add a little bit of this foreground detail next. So we've got a big bushy thing here. Another one which curves round. In front of that is a fence. Now we're not going to try and add everything because that's too complex. So we're just doing a quick demo here. So part of what I'm showing is how I choose to simplify. See, this is just capturing the perspective of a bush coming towards us, a big hedge coming towards us. Okay. And then we've got a car. Cars can be a challenge to get right. So if we just mark, it's a bit taller than the, the hedge. And then the windscreen's a bit lower than the hedge. And then you make your rectangular shape. You can see a tiny bit of the roof. And the bottom of the car's 
in the middle of the head approximately. You can see the wheel comes in at the bottom of this part of the um, windscreen. Another wheel is just behind there. And then we join it up. And you can just see that wheel there. So we're not, you know, we're not creating a perfect representation. We're creating a fun representation of what we can see. Let me just do the same here with this fence. Which covers up the front there. And we'll give this pavement a little bit of shape. I'm going to leave out this car. I'm going to leave out the car that's right in the foreground. And I'm going to leave out these cars on the left because our detail is here. A little bit more detail sort of sweeping around. And then this is just going to be a splash of colour and a few lines. We'll see if we add anything extra. I've, that said, I've just seen one more thing which would be fun to add in. And that is another lamp. I'm actually going to bring it above these houses so that we can be clear what it is. That's all the sketching you need to do. So that has taken about five minutes with me talking. That's all you need to do. It's not accurate. That doesn't matter. So now I'm going to use my fountain pen. This is a 0.3mm fountain pen. The advantage of a fountain pen is it's flexible. You can use the front and the back and that's what I'm going to do. So now we're going in and we're going to start with those lines we're confident in. So there's the outline of the house. The roof. So before I hadn't marked any of the exact shape, I just made it a triangle, but we're trying to add a little bit more shape as we go in this time. And we can correct some of the perspective. So that's sloping down, whereas this is sloping up. If you're not quite certain about something, you can do it as a little gestural sweeping line like that. And then that means that if you don't like it, you can turn it into texture later. So I often forget to add in my chimneys until the very end, but they do ground an image quite well. So let's add it in now. And these three little chimney pots at the top. And then there's a fun TV aerial. I'm not going to be able to get it in if I make it its real length, so I'll make it quite tall. Then you got this. And then if we just look closely at the image, this roof actually overlaps this wall. We want to mark that in so that we can understand what we're looking at. Okay. Now, some of this doesn't quite make sense yet because this house sticks out. So we need to make that clear. All right. And then just to add even more texture straight away, we can add in this fun drain pipe. Don't worry if a lot of the lines look scratchy, look odd, look incomplete. We're going to go over this quickly afterwards. Now, cars are scary, so I'm just going to go for it. So I'm using my outline, but I'm also having a look continuously at the photo which I've got in front of me to make sure that my first outline was what's really there, not just what I wanted to be there. And again, we can add some more of these details in. Adding in the lights really shapes the car, I find, because you get the edge of the light coming around, the edge of the light leaving your page. And we'll 
replace the wheel because they're challenging to get right. And then we'll place the back wheel. And he's all right, you know. Pop in these wing mirrors. And this guy as well. There you go. Looks like a car. Look even better when we've added some colour. Just going to continue now with our focal point. So let's get this light. It's got a cool shape with quite a lot of shadow at the bottom. So I'm going to add that in with pen. And lots of circles. A little sort of top hat almost. And then we'll bring down our line. Now it really doesn't matter if it's not that straight. It gets wider as we get down as well. And about here it attaches to a fun sign. These little details and points of interest really I find let you completely understand where you are in the image. You know, it this this dates it as well. It's quite a modern sign. So we're just gonna move to the bottom here because again where we place the foot of the lamp post helps us understand the length of the image. And then there's some details which are sort of closely connected to that. So what I'm doing here is just adding the shape of the, the fence. You know, it's these slightly higgledy-piggledy wooden slats, so we'll show you that. And the same going off into distance. And we can make a bit more of that later. Here you've got the, the edge of the driveway which tells us a bit about what's going on. And it comes in there. And actually there's a little edge here as well. Okay. So I think the next thing we go to is this hedge. So he's probably a bit big in my initial pencil drawing, but let's see what he comes out like when we do it again. So we just got the front in. This outline a bit clearer than this one because this is an external shape. This one's internal. And then just get the back in as well. It's definitely in front of the car. And like we did here, we're going to just work our way along the fence. So yeah, we, we build in these higgledy, piggledy slats. And we try and maintain the perspective. So it's slightly sloping up because it's also on a hill. There we go, and then we'll add the next big shape, which I think is this bush. So there's the outline of it. And then we'll just add these little internal lines, which let us understand it a bit more. And then there's another lighter coloured bush. Just comes in the front here. Okay, and a little wall which sort of sweeps around. And we're almost there with our outlines, I think. So we'll pop this chap in and we'll make it similar to the one we drew already. These loose circles. And that nice sort of 
tear, no, I don't know what shape it is. Bell shape, I was going to say. And then we bring it all the way down and place it there. Okay. Now the last bit of our foreground is to pop our pavement in. I always do this very loosely to start with because I'm never quite sure if these lines are going to be the top or well, the top like this. So I've made it the side because that's what they seem to work as better. Or if they were going to be the top where you can see here. You don't have to draw every bit. It's not always clear to see anyway. No. Our last bit of background detail, just these loose, scratchy lines in the background. What we don't want to do is overdo them and regret it. So we'll underdo them and maybe add more. We'll see. Now we can get some of these bushes, this idea of some fences, there's a big bush here, just using the same shapes and lines as we were using in our foreground. Okay, so we just spend another couple of minutes refining some of these marks. So our big lines, we're going to go over them. I think it looks quite nice if you can see they've been over, so I don't mind leaving it a little bit ragged. We'll pop in some of these textural lines and we'll start adding in our fun details. We've got a satellite dish. Now in the middle we've got our window. So a window for me is an outside shape and then some inside shapes. And then just to give it a little bit more shape, you can go over the lines where you can slightly see the inside and we give it a windowsill. We've got another line which delineates change in texture here so we'll add that in and we'll add some texture to the roof so just having a little look at what the roof tiles look like and just try and simulate that with your pen you're not marking the roof tiles in at all but this compared to these very straight tiles is really obvious okay now the only thing with brickwork in in this image is actually the chimney. So we're going to make that clear with some bricks. All right, add a tiny bit more shape to these chimneys. And then what have we got in the front? So we got a bit of a challenge with a porch at the front. But it's still just a couple of different shapes. We've got a effectively a box. It's below our eye line, so it goes up like that. And then it's got a little square on its top. And then it's got a little grey bit at the back, which connects to the wall. So that's done. Just make these lines a bit clearer. And then we're going to lose the left hand window because I don't think I have shape to do it neatly. And just Add these windows in, and add these windows. A little bit more shape by going over the lines. And then we've got this window behind, which sort of curves round. And there's our inside shapes. All right. This one's got a middle window as well, which is fun to add a bit of difference. You see how I got that wrong to start with? Well, not wrong, I just did it differently. 
if I went over it and it's, it looks fine. It'll look great with some colour on. There's another fun line down here and a little safety line. Fire alarm we can add some colour to and then a road sign. These are the most important windows. And now that we're moving away from our focal point, we'll progressively add less and less detail in. And be less and less precise. Get this little sloping roof in, and the fact that there's a door underneath it, and then one more window. We'll line this window up with the one above it. And what will help as well is adding in this line, which is the bottom of the house, and I think that instantly everything makes a bit more sense. Really loose, doesn't matter. That looks great. And then we've got a couple of windows here. And that, for now, does those windows. I haven't done the top of the roof. And we'll add this chimney just coming in. That's fun. And we'll add just a little bit of texture. What we don't want to do is detract from over here. Just seeing these shapes, which look cool. And last but not least, we get back to our stuff right at the front. So we just add these shaky, gestural, really quick lines. As we get this way and this way, we get fewer of them. Here the lines in the photo are a bit more obvious. The other thing about these these ones is they're thinner, like we talked, they're further away. So just make sure that's clear. A couple of things we can do with these bushes is shape them with these lines showing that there's leaves and gaps coming in. More at the front than at the back. We we'll just add some shade because these lines at the front of the a um, driveway definitely in shade and then we can just reaffirm some of the outline of this car which is looking even better now there's some context around it okay and these bushes at the back can have a little bit more just so we know what they are so that's the pen work all done. Next, we move on to the colour. So, as if by magic, there's my palette back. Like I said, I'm just going to be using all one knife, one knife, one um, brush. It's a size eight. It's a mixed synthetic sable. But I'm not fussy. So, for example, I've got this one, which is quite a nice synthetic. I've also got a couple of um, dagger brushes. These are actually very cheap synthetic, but the shape's really fun. We may use them a little bit, but I want to prove that you can do everything with just one round brush. I use one of these, just a spray bottle, to liven up my watercolours. And just so you know what I've got, my watercolour palette. I normally paint using this This as the palette, but I can't fit it on the video. I'll talk you through which colours I'm picking up as I go. So the sky here is blue, but it's a dull blue. One of my favourite colours at the moment is the cerulean blue. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that, loads of water, and we'll mark in some of the sky. Now I'll often rub out these pencil marks 
but for a quick demonstration we'll leave them in again just to prove it really doesn't matter. The colour, the shape, the feel is far more important than accuracy and neatness. So that's what we'll do for now. Let that dry. I'm just softening the edges a little bit. Um, if you notice in windows, they can they can be dark, but if they're light, they're reflecting something. So we just start with some of the same colour in these windows. We can go over them if we want them to be dark. Obviously the ones lower down are less likely to be reflecting the sky. There's some reflections here as well and on the top of the car. And we're going to just add, because there are windows here, we'll just add a few dots. We can decide if they need some ink later. And dots coming down. Perfect. That's colour one. Colour two. Let's stay fairly, I'm not going to say realistic, but based on what's in the image. So there's this quite fun green. So I've got a sap green, but actually I'm going to use that for the bushes. So let's, this is a Windsor green blue shade. It's a bit more of a synthetic colour than the sap green. So I think it will do nicely to show that we're painting a house here. And just keep that colour moving. To start with is this is the first wash. So it's really quick. Ooh, I use some sap green there, but that's fine. I often mix colours in, so I'm gonna keep doing that. Actually looks really good. So I'm gonna mix and I often will do the first wash and then drop in other colours other than just one colour. And it gives you a really nice speckled effect. I don't know if you can quite pick it up on the camera there. But I'll show you later when I repeat. Okay. Next we've got a sort of off-white. So a colour which most people have is a yellow ochre. I'll use that with loads of water and a little bit of cerulean and you'll get a sort of greeny grey. We'll see if that's good enough. Yeah that's good. Look at that. Again this is really light colour. Further down it's going to be a bit darker because it's in more shade and we can already start to bring that in. So if I just drop in a bit more pigment and move it around. There we go. And then the other place that we shade is under the rafters and in this little corner. Right, this house is whitey blue. What we're going to do is just put some little marks because we don't want to be putting much detail there. Then I'm staying away from the roof a bit just because of the wetness there. But it's probably good to go now. What I like about this roof is it's got two different colours. So we've got this much brighter colour here. So I'm using a Scarlet Lake. And it's definitely, you know, roofs have so much texture, so leave plenty of gaps. There's these little bits of white and grey. Um, to do this darker one, I'm actually going to use an Indian red, uh, which is a, just a, a deep red. It's one of my favourite colours. I'll probably overuse it. The other thing you could do is use that um, uh, primary red and just mix a bit of blue in like a French ultramarine or one of those deeper blues or even a bit of an umber or any other brown really. And what I'm noticing is at the join of these roofs is definitely a bit darker. So while it's wet, I'm going to come in with some blue. We can go down this join as well. And then this bit is definitely darker than that bit because it's in the shade. So that's just a bit of blue with the Indian red. 
bit of Indian red to make it definitely red. All right. So let's move into the foreground. Doing it in a similar order to what we did the drawing. So we'll get these bushes in now. This is a sap green. You can mix sap green um, with a variety of blues and yellows. You can also mix. Well, you can mix loads of greens from different things. Blues and yellows, obviously, are the key. But you can take. So I've just popped a little bit of French ultramarine there. Sorry. Um, just to get this shade in while it's still drying and I'm going to use that same mix in this background tree which is definitely darker sorry hedge bush um, this one at the front is lighter so we're going to use a lemon yellow um, there we go now what's left we've got these fun uh, fences. So I don't like using too many colours. I find when I try and use loads and loads of different colours, everything gets really complicated. So I'm going to approximate these hedges to this ochre. I think this one's got a bit more colour in it. As I get closer, I'm just trying to add a bit more pigment. So you'll, you know this bit's closer to you than there. I would say, as well as yellow acre, there's quite a lot of grey. So I'm just going to drop bits of this French ultramarine in again. Um, it's got a shadow at the front, so we'll just do that while it's wet as well. Having stuff run is quite fun, I think. I enjoy it. Um, this other fence is definitely more on the grey spectrum. I'm going to add a tiny bit of yellow ochre all over it and then this is a French ultramarine again okay so that's just our initial tone we're gonna oh, and behind here is even darker by the way we're going to come back uh, in a bit and we'll add a bit more color to these things now the question we have is do we need something here I'm going to leave that question for later because I don't know yet. So we'll go back around. This was our Windsor Green Blue Shade. Now what I'm doing, I'm picking up quite a lot more pigment. I'm going to go back in and add some texture. Okay, so there's lots of pigment and now we move it around. The light's coming from here, we know that. It's not super obvious in this image, but we know that from where the darkness is on those roofs. So we know that under here, this bit of the eaves will be slightly darker. And then also coming down here from the windowsill. Uh, we're just exaggerating what we can see and what we, what we want to see, what we think is probably true. We mixed some sap green in before, so we'll do the same now. just gives a little bit of life, in my opinion, to uh, what could otherwise be a plain wall. I think there's enough colour here, but what there isn't is a huge amount of texture. So we're going to use burnt umber, oh, so that's French Ops Marine, burnt umber, and you get quite a nice sort of towards neutral grey. I'd often use Payne's Grey or uh, Sepia as well. Sepia is definitely brown, it can mix really well. Especially with French Ultramarine, it gets you a really nice dark. But I'm just trying to do things which uh, people more likely have in their palette if they want to sort of copy. And again, just adding these shapes. And I'm just cleaning my brush off. We'll soften some edges. Something we missed out is that this has got a lovely red colour. We can pop that in now. 
Okay. Let's see, that's enough texture there. Back to these roofs. So you can use the sort of side. Don't know how obvious it is what I'm doing there, but instead of using the end, you can also just use the sides and side and uh, dab and move and jump about and you end up dropping pigment and I don't want to be able to fully control what I'm doing here I want there to be some happy accidents and I'm learning to live uh, with there being some unhappy accidents <laughs> and there's our Indian red more in there now this time we'll use um, this Sort of neutral grey tone to come back in on these lines. Oh, that's very blue, that's all right. It's nice to have different shades, so we'll just neutralize a bit more. And now we've got different shades running throughout the roof, which just adds even more to the texture. This bit needs darkening up, so oh, I won't get ahead of myself actually. There's a bit of grey in here, and there, and there, and this here as well, needs a bit darker. Okay, so broadly our colours in the front are done. I'm going to keep saying that and then just remember we haven't actually got an added more here. So all I'm doing is adding a bit more pigment into these bushes just to add more shape and then drop in some of that neutral maybe even just go with some straight up French ultramarine and then mix those two together which is how we made this colour and this one and then turn a bit more lemon yellow there we go fine We've done most of the colour here. I'm aware I haven't done the car. We'll have a think about that later. Um, what we need to start doing is adding in those darker details. So, sticking with these colours we've been using, we're going to get as thick a possible paste. Not as thick as possible, but a, a much thicker colour. More pigment. There we go. So you can see it's still liquid, but it's getting closer to toothpaste. And we're going to go in and we're going to add our details. So this guy, then of course, a lamp coming all the way down it. It's having a little think about where the light is. So there's going to be reflections on this side. So there's little gaps I'm leaving. said it was darker back here. If we just put more water on our brush we can neutralize a lot more but without making it too intense because this isn't really our focal point. Add a bit of texture in here and in here then we'll come back. So all you're doing is jumping around and thing Oh, what needs more, what needs more. And move on before you think you've done enough, because if you've done enough, well, if you think you've done enough, you might have gone too far. Okay. You can always go back to add more, but you can't go back to take away. Adding a touch of red there, but just a touch. And I think this deserves more intensity. Okay. As it does here. Especially where the shadow will be. Now we're going to pop this guy in now. I told you I always forget the, the top. I like making chimneys really stand out. So that's just some of our red. There's a bit too much water, but it's fine. I'll just remove a bit there. 
Okay, so how do we make this go from this to uh, something more finished? We can probably jump around, keep adding a few more details. We want to bring out these funny little things like this uh, yellow alarm. You know, we've got this white CCTV or security light, but you know, make it red. Make that a bit more red. And then we're trying to get in our highest contrast places now. So that's our windows. It's often our windows. So a bit of dark pigment, clean the brush. Soften the edges a little bit, move it around, make sure you're happy with it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Down here, if we're true for we aren't really getting much reflection at all. So we can just block those in much more. What I'm doing is between different windows just changing the amount of burnt sienna, the amount of uh, French ultramarine, and then you get these fun different textures. Something I haven't paid attention to is the fact this is a side so it's going to be all toned down. And then we'll just drop in a bit more to give those windows. This also needs a bit more toning down. Under the eaves is definitely going to be dark. Okay, so we're getting there I would say. Where can we add more shape? So our pavement. definitely gets a bit more shape like that. There's no yellow lines, yellow lines can look really cool. And then just helping the perspective by almost dry brushing some texture onto the road. And the road isn't just one colour, so think about the colours we've already used, which might look good. There's some yellow ochre in there. Really this is just scratching away so we know the shape of what's coming towards us. This guy's looking a bit unloved. We can also now get a much thicker paste and add even more shape to some of these darker things. I say now because they've dried, they've had a chance to dry. And we got the car, so. Don't like cars because you can try so hard and they are difficult. <laughs> For me, the thing is not to try too hard, not to try and make it look excessively exact and real and just focus on the feel of the thing and leave lots of nice white spaces on it. That said I probably should have left this guy white. We can cheat later by going back in and adding a light tone like that. So that's just a really thick lemon yellow, making up for my lack of forethought. And then thick paste to darken the wheels. And a bit more on the windows. There we go. He's done. This is bleeding nicely, don't mind that at all. What I would say. It's definitely an object which has a shower, shadow. So make sure we know it exists in space. So this pavement needs a bit more shape. So these are the paving slabs, just little lines. Some of them can get shaded in. There's a yellow ochre, so just the same colours. 
Sometimes I'll do these lines in pen and colour them in, but this I think this looks cool. I want a tiny bit more colour in our windows if I have time. And we'll just add these words. And so under here is going to be really dark. It's also not a reflection, so I'm going to make it very brown. Just so you know, it's different to what's going on elsewhere. That's it. That's too brown for me. So let's go back in. Soften, soften. Okay, now this for me for a quick sketch is done. A couple more things to think about. Do we want colour on some of these houses? And let's say let's try it. So just drop tiny bits of colour in really loosely. And then I'm gonna use my Indian red with brown, just to suggest a roof here and there. I think that'll do before I ruin it. Now, last thing is reaffirming this uh, this sky. So it, it's a sort of dappled grey blue. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go back in with the cerulean blue thicker, much thicker this time. And I've just put some pigment on and I'm going to move it around. It doesn't have to go everywhere. Now I don't really want to be introducing another colour now. I'll often use a few blues in the sky. I've got a few light blues. But what I'll do instead is a colour we've already used, which is this French ultramarine, and then also some of this grey that we've mixed to offset that. So you see just adding shapes in the sky. As we get closer here, it's further away, so those shapes will be less intense and further away, and further away, less intense and smaller. And then up here, they'll be big. And we can also dry brush them white Away. There we go. And I would say that guy's done. And I don't know how long it took. Hopefully about an hour. And it's quite a fun gesture little sketch. Add my signature. It's Toby Urban Sketch. Let it dry. There's always one more thing. This is the fun bit of course. Let's take the colours we've been using. So we've got this nice uh, green. So this is the windsor green. And all I'm doing, loads of water, loading up the brush, bring it over and provide a bit of texture. So some light taps. And then over here, we'll do some bigger ones. And then we can get even more texture on that road. So I'm going to do... Um, uh, burnt Amber, French Ultramarine, and uh, loads of water this time, so fully loading. By doing that, oh, you should get some bigger drops. All right. And then, got sap green this time, and I'm just going to flick it onto the bushes. And we'll suggest a little bush or something going on here. And one, oh, little bits of red. And you can even go in, enlarge some of these, you know, purposeful accidents. So this is the green now, just these maybe bigger, more interesting. Now we are done. Cool, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, 
what I'm going to do is magically add a scan of this behind what I'm talking about now. So you can see what it looks like when it's completely dried off. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to try and bring you even more things like this. I've got a tutorial coming up with Etcher which I'd love you to join. Um, it'll be something a bit like this video. Hopefully just as much fun and hopefully just as successful. Alright, wishing you all a good day.